When was the last time you gazed up into the inky black sky and saw the stars? It's such a magical and awesome sight. If you have the chance, you should always take it. Well, today is World Peace Day, and Coco and I really want to celebrate it. So, we thought that we could all do a little bit of stargazing together. Let's lie back now in your bed. Breathe gently and clasp your hands under your head. Gently close your eyes so you feel your eyelashes on your cheeks. With your eyes closed, imagine yourself lying down on the soft, warm ground and looking up to the sky above you. It's inky black with a hint of navy blue and it's full of tiny pinpricks of light stars look up at the stars and see how they sparkle in the sky very soon we're going to fly up into space and meet all the friendly planets of our solar system we'll find them watching the creatures who live on their surfaces enjoying a particularly special day. This is Gaia and the Peaceful Planets by Susanna McLaughlin. It was a very peaceful day in space. The planets were hanging comfortably in their places, in the blanket of dark sky which stretched as far as anybody could see. Millions of stars twinkled and shimmered in the inky darkness, like delicate fairy lights draped across the whole sky. Astronauts were bobbing around softly in their space station, and the occasional little spaceship trundled by, carving a sleepy path through the stars. The Milky Way was glowing softly and twirly-whirly galaxies streaked the sky in the distance. There was a special feeling in the air. Gaia stirred, noting this special sensation tickling her atmosphere. Gaia is the name of the Earth. She is a big, beautiful planet covered in sparkling seas and oceans in all different shades of blue. From space, you can spot her sandy golden deserts, silver rocky mountains, and green rolling hills. She's home to billions of lucky creatures, koalas for one, fairies too, llamas, hedgehogs, bears and dogs, even humans. On this special day, Gaia sleepily blinked open her eyes, wriggled her nose, and took in a big, deep breath from her fresh atmosphere. She gazed out into space, marvelling at the brightness of the stars, the deep, rich, dark blue of the sky, and the shimmer of the satellites that floated overhead. As she looked out, A beautiful glowing sphere drifted into her vision. Oh, hello, moon, she said. The moon greeted her kindly. The moon was a kind and serene character who watched over the earth. He was never too far away, glowing softly in the sky. Sometimes, like today, He appeared as a big, glowing orb. Or, sometimes, he took on a dainty crescent shape, coming to two neat points in the sky. He had kind, crinkly eyes and a long, pointed nose. He had a wide, still smile fixed on his face. Here and there, Craters were scattered across his surface, special dips and caves that beckoned you to explore them. 
Gaia sniffed the air. <laughs> Something is different today, Moon. Everything is still and calm and sleepy. It is so peaceful. The moon nodded. He said, It is a special day, I think. The creatures who live on my surface are celebrating. I can see thousands of moon mice gathering together. They are decorating their orange fur with white flowers and spreading good cheer. I can hear them talking about kindness and wishing each other well. Morty the mouse is preparing a banquet, Moon said. I can see shining platters of mac and moon cheese, gooey moon fondue, and fluffy moon souffles laid out on the tables. There are hundreds of chairs. He's carefully slicing a quadruple decker cheesecake into hundreds of pieces too. Each piece is decorated with a little mouse made of a gold pom-pom and sparkling pipe cleaner. It looks delicious. He looked closer and described the scene. The mouse orchestra is beginning to warm up in the city square, plinking the piano and plonking the guitar strings. One particularly grand mouse is stood on the bandstand, warming up his voice, puffing up his chest and trilling out scales. Martha and Maggie the mice are hanging silver banners onto the stand. They all have the word peace written on them in sparkly paint. The moon gasped. Oh, that's it? It's World Peace Day. The moon smiled. The mice are spreading kindness all over the surface of the moon, he said. I can feel it glittering in the air. It's giving me a warm, tingly feeling. Gaia was amazed. That was it. She could feel kindness in the air too. It was a day to celebrate the power of peace. She began dreaming of the magic of peace, of people playing together, dancing, sharing and spreading love. She looked out across space. It felt peaceful out there, too. She called to her neighbour, Mars. Mars? Can you feel that? It's peace day, she said. Mars opened his big brown eyes and furrowed his big furry eyebrows in thought. Oh, yes, he boomed in his gruff voice. He could feel it and see it, too, on his surface. Kindness was blowing on the soft breeze across the rocky deserts of Mars. Red dust was billowing up and floating on the wind, forming in shapes of love hearts drifting across the planet. There are lots of very peaceful little creatures living on Mars. They are called Martians. Martians are pink, furry little people with huge feet and four big, kind eyes. They all have antennae on their heads. Some of the antennas stretch straight into the sky. Some flop like bunny ears. Some are curly and some bend into the shapes of stars and moons. The Martians live in caves and craters, but they're often darting around above the surface too. 
They love Mars's wild winds, using them to go paragliding, windsurfing, and sand tobogganing too. Mars looked down upon the Martians and told Gaia what he saw. Today, on Peace Day, the little Martians had gathered at Mars's secret ice lake for a party. They had put on their rainbow leg warmers, multicolored puffer jackets, and fluffy earmuffs for the occasion. One little Martian by the name of Marty had brought his shiny new skates, but he had never ice skated before. His best friend, Margaret, was the best ice skater in their class, so she took him onto the ice and they began to glide across the surface of the frozen lake. Marty was a natural. Gracefully, he made his way across the ice, whilst Margaret twirled and leapt around him. They carved beautiful shapes in the frozen lake, and their skates threw twinkling snowflakes into the air, each one totally unique and beautiful. Mars smiled. He had never seen such a peaceful scene. One by one, the Martians took to the ice, and they all spun and slid around together, making new friends and enjoying their home. One Martian mother was heating frothy milk over a fire and toasting gooey Mars mellows. The little ones were gobbling them up, getting sticky cheeks and fingers. The older Martians were waltzing on the dusty banks near the lake and laughing together. Gaia thought this scene was beautiful. As she was dreaming about it, she heard a call from behind her and spun around on her axis. It? was Venus. She was cooing to Earth and Mars. Hello, darlings, she called. Can you feel the love in the air? Gaia and Mars greeted her with a smile. Venus was such a lovely planet. She glowed with warmth from every inch of her orange surface. She had beautiful pink eyes, and her pupils were the shape of little love hearts. She had a cute little nose and a glittering smile, which made everybody happy when she beamed at them across space. Venus was a land of volcanoes. Her volcanoes were filled with warm, bubbly lava, which was rose-scented, like the most soothing and welcoming bath water. Her sky was colourful like a sunset. It was streaked with warm orange clouds, which glowed with the sun's rays. There were no people living there, but millions of love bugs scuttled around on the surface. They were beautiful jewel-like bugs, with smiling faces, who were always fizzing with energy and singing out into the sky. Venus is covered in streams and rivers of her rose-scented lava, which are home to many fuzzy, cuddly animals. They're very similar to Earth's otters in appearance, but much, much fluffier and their coats come in all the colours of the rainbow. Gaia asked Venus what her furry creatures were doing to celebrate this special day. Venus replied that they were floating down the longest stream of warm, bubbly lava on their backs, holding paws in a long, happy chain reaching all the way around the planet. The love bugs 
were gathering on the banks and dancing and singing love songs in their high-pitched voices. Gaia's heart felt even warmer than usual, thinking of this image. Mercury was floating nearby, listening to Venus's description. Picturing it, he sighed a happy sigh. Oh, good evening, Mercury, Gaia said. She hadn't realised Mercury was listening. He was such a sleepy planet. She thought he would be snoozing. Mercury wished them all a good evening. He said he had been awoken with a lovely feeling. The feeling of friendship glowing in his chest. He was a little planet who looked the size of an apple to Gaia, but his surface shone a lovely silver colour. He told the others about his special feeling. He felt that it was important that he told the other planets how happy he was that they were his friends. This made the other planets very pleased. Gaia's cheeks blushed pink. Mercury called out to Saturn and Jupiter, Neptune, Uranus and little Pluto and told them how happy he felt that they hung in the air too, like glowing baubles in the twinkling expanse of space. Jupiter smiled his wide toothy grin. Jupiter was ginormous. He had a beautiful, light, marbled surface, like a seashell, and big golden eyes, which looked like two suns radiating from his face. He told the others that he felt the same. What a special day. Gaia asked what the inhabitants of Jupiter were doing to celebrate this peaceful day. Jupiter looked down at his surface. Jupiter is an especially warm planet, with seas of molten gold bubbling under its surface. The warmth heats the ground so that it is toasty underfoot. The air is very special on Jupiter. It is shiny and twinkling, as if it is full of golden glitter. The light there is very golden too. It is so beautiful that all of the creatures who live there are especially happy and calm. The main inhabitants of Jupiter are big furry mammoths. The mammoths have big tusks made of gold and shimmering blue fur. They have long trunks which they use to eat the delicious, juicy fruits that grow from Jupiter's tropical trees. The mammoths are incredibly peaceful animals. Their favourite activity is plodding through the trees and napping, which they do often. They nap sprawled together in clearings, soaking in the warmth from the ground. They also like playing card games and reading stories to one another. Jupiter told the other planets that today the mammoths were reading a story about peace. Grandpa Mammoth was sitting on a big, wide tree stump and all of the baby mammoths were sitting cross-legged around him. They each clutched a cup of foamy hot chocolate which they sipped through their long, fluffy trunks. Grandpa Mammoth flapped his big, billowing ears and began the story. He told a beautiful tale about friendship. In the story, a very grumpy mammoth called Bruno was grumbling all day long. He had silver tusks, not gold like all of his friends, 
and it made him feel very left out. He was always quarrelling with the other little mammoths, and he never shared his toys. One day, a very kind little mammoth called Billy befriended Bruno, despite his prickly nature. She showed him the power of love with her kindness and told him that no matter the colour of his tusks, if he showed people his kindness too, everybody would love him, just the way he was. She was right. Bruno began sharing his toys and being kind to the other mammoths, and they loved him in return. He was so happy with his new friendships that his fur glowed and twinkled with love and he became the most popular mammoth of all. It was a lovely story of peace and friendship. As Grandpa told his story, the birds flying through the glittering sky began to settle in the trees around their heads. They were beautiful creatures, with shiny feathers in blue, green and red, and long gold beaks. They all twittered and tweeted whilst listening to the story, cozying in amongst the trees. One by one, Every animal slipped into a peaceful snooze until they were all snoring in harmony. Even Grandpa Mammoth drifted off, his voice becoming slower and slower until his chin bobbed down and he fell asleep, still upright with the book in his hands. Gaia laughed. What peaceful, sleepy animals. Saturn giggled and batted her eyelashes. Saturn was a very bubbly planet, full of laughter and energy. She was a lovely sandy colour with stripes around her centre. She wore a huge glittering ring which looped around her tummy like a hula hoop. Saturn had big brown eyes with thick eyelashes, a wide nose and pink lips which were always giggling. She thought the mammoth's sleepy scene sounded beautiful. But it couldn't be further from the fun chaos that was happening on her planet. Saturn's inhabitants were celebrating peace with a party. Saturn is populated by giants. They look like humans, but with big pointy ears and huge wide feet. They are very joyful giants who bound over Saturn's fields, laughing together. They lived in white canvas tents, all together in vast open spaces under the stars. They would often stay up all night, playing twinkly music and discussing which creature each constellation most looked like. They had charted the sky, drawing a map of the stars and joining them dot to dot to create pictures of dragons, centaurs, fairies and more. They dress in flowing space silk of all colours and patterns. They wear sparkling jewels around their necks and flowers in their long flowing hair. They love running and dancing and are always barefoot. Saturn described the scene that was happening on her surface. The giants were having a fabulous party. 
They were eating fruit sandwiches and chocolate pudding and dancing together. They pounded on big drums and hooted on saxophones and squawked on trumpets. They whooped and danced, swinging one another around with their strong arms. Some of the braver giants even took a rocket up to the big ring that circled Saturn and was sliding around and around, whizzing through space and giggling with glee. They were having an amazing time. They were such fun-loving giants. Neptune chortled at this image. Neptune was large and blue, with wispy white hair and a little moustache. He had wise silver eyes and a knobbly nose. He was very kind and grandfatherly, and although he was the quietest of the planets, he was very beloved. On his planet, the beings were teeny-weeny little people who lived in burrows like mice. He told the others that they were celebrating Peace Day with their families, each tucked up in their burrow. The burrows were very cosy. They were usually furnished with carefully carved wooden tables and cabinets and big squishy sofas covered in patchwork quilts. The little people were playing board games and eating from plates piled high with mashed potato and gravy. The children were playing with little wooden toys, and the grown-ups were watching fondly and drinking warm mugs of tea. As they all smiled at this image, Gaia noticed little Pluto in the distance. He was always zooming around on his orbit. She called out to him, and he slowed down to say hello. Pluto wasn't technically a planet, as he was so small, but he was no less of a friend. Pluto greeted the other planets with a smile. He was always very busy flying through the sky and running rings around the sun. Gaia liked it when they crossed paths because Pluto was such a fun-loving, cheeky little fellow. He had happy purple eyes and freckles on his nose. He had little tiny ears and a big, excitable grin. Gaia asked Pluto what he had seen on his journey today. Pluto said he saw meteors dancing in the sky, moving much slower than usual, drifting in beautiful formations. He said they gleamed brightly as they danced, lighting up the sky. He said he saw two comets too. Usually, comets would be streaking through the sky, trailing beautiful golden light behind them. Today they had slowed down and sat amongst the stars side by side, enjoying the quiet. Pluto said nobody was hurrying today. Even the astronauts in the space station were taking a day off. They were playing word games and drawing pictures, wrapped up in their blankets with their fuzzy socks on. Uranus, a bright green planet who wore an emerald ring, spoke up at this. Not... All of the astronauts are resting, he said happily. 
Some have just landed on my surface. He described these astronauts. They had come whizzing through space from a far away galaxy and landed their shiny little rockets on Uranus's icy surface. They looked like little arctic foxes with huge ears and white fur, which blended perfectly into the snow. They would be invisible if it weren't for their love of jazzy woolly jumpers. The only thing that marked them as aliens was their noses, which were glittery red and in the shape of a perfect love heart. The little aliens dismounted from their rocket and cheered together, marvelling at the icy mountains and fluffy snow around them, happy to be in their new home. They were led by a brave little fellow called Milo. Milo sniffed the air with his love heart nose, listened to the breeze with his large pointed ears, and pointed with his padded paw to the ideal location for their first town. The others followed him, and they set about building igloos. Once hundreds of little igloos had been built, they began unloading their suitcases from the rockets. They had brought fluffy rugs, soft blankets, and embroidered pillows with them to make their dens extra comfy and cosy. They unpacked several never-ending candles which they hung from their doorways, lighting their homes with a warm orange glow. When they were done, they gathered together for their first meal. They ate peppery potato soup in a big snuggly crowd and then tucked into their dessert of chocolate biscuits dunked in hot milk. Milo stood up and tapped his biscuit against his mug to get everyone's attention. He was going to make a speech. He wished everyone a happy peace day and welcomed them to their new home. He said... He could feel that they were going to live happily and peacefully there forever, exploring the ice caves and swimming in the cool lagoons. They all cheered. Uranus described this with happy tears in his green eyes. Gaia was so pleased for him. Uranus had always looked forward to the day that creatures would begin to live on his planet. And here they were, on peace day. She was sure that that was a sign that they would live there happily forever and ever. Gaia smiled. Everyone was different, all across the solar system but they were all at peace. She looked inwardly now. How lucky she was. She loved each one of the creatures who called her planet home. There were more people on Earth celebrating love and peace than she could possibly count. There were sleepy children cosy in their beds, listening to stories. There were dogs snuggled up in kennels and cats curled up in balls, little bunnies in their burrows and squirrels in their trees. Gaia turned her eyes to her favourite place to observe, 
sleepy forest. There were so many creatures there, celebrating their friendships. There was a family of koalas dancing in their kitchen. A big, cuddly bear cub was singing a special lullaby to her family as her parents watched on proudly. There were some little orange foxes playing happily in their den. There was even a family of teddy bears eating from a wicker picnic basket. The nocturnal animals were just beginning to wake up ready to have a little party themselves. Fairy lights hung from the trees in a wide clearing, sending their warm glow into the sky. Badgers were hanging bunting from tree to tree, and frogs were hopping around, rehearsing a dance. A comforting chatter was floating into the air, And Gaia smiled. It was sure to be a peaceful night, too. She looked out across the ocean. It was very still, apart from a few gentle waves lapping quietly on the sand. There were starfish snoozing in the shallows, and one very zen-looking pufferfish floating towards the surface with his eyes closed. He looked especially peaceful. Gaia supposed he must be meditating. Far out to sea, a blue whale was laid on his back, dozing. His skin was like pale blue velvet, and his tail bobbed up and down in the current. Little bubbles escaped from his blowhole as he snored, floating up to pop on the surface. All of these peaceful scenes had made Gaia feel warm and cosy so much so that she let out a yawn. She looked out at space and began to snuggle into the blanket of the sky. A shooting star dashed across the sky. She looked out at her friends, Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and little Pluto. What a lovely world she lived in. She turned and looked at the huge golden orb of the sun, which always warmed her back as she slept. The sun was watching her with a gentle smile on her face. Good night, Gaia, the sun said. Good night, sun, Gaia said, before drifting off into a peaceful sleep.